All right, here we are this morning. It is another fun and wonderful morning trying to survive and maintain and not be just an absolute pile of grumpiness because it's already not a great morning and it's not really even started yet. But that is the unfortunate state that I am in. And it it takes everything in my power to use the power of perspective and to understand um, that in the grand scheme of things, I am in a good place. Uh, the biggest perspective that I have right now pertains to like the idea that pretty much everybody seems to be miserable in work, at work, or wherever it might be, but like at least we're working, if that makes sense. I have a friend who just recently got a job and his job frequently is sending people home because there's not enough work for them to do or they're frequently um, shutting down the plant because there's not enough work for them to do and um, whenever they do those things he of course is going without pay for that week or for that day or for whatever period of time it is and um, he's already not making an impressive salary and then you add to that fact that he's getting sent home frequently and it makes for not a great living situation especially for someone with a young family and so I am stuck because like on one hand I have luckily his perspective and the situation that he's in in life that I can lean on and be like, well, at least I'm not there. Like, I go to work every day, I get paid every day, and I'm making a pretty reasonable salary at the end of the day. And so I have that perspective, but it's also hard to not recognize the fact that, like, the place I'm at in work right now is not um, ideal. And because it's like this has taken over my life and I can't do anything outside of work things right now. And so the power of perspective is a wonderful thing and is a good thing to have, but to the same end, um, perspective will only get you so far. Like I can appreciate that I am not in this person's shoes, but it's not appreciation enough to make me less miserable in my own shoes, if that makes sense, and usually I'm pretty good at being in control of my own perspective and understanding, like, okay, um, at least you're not here, at least you're this, at least you're that, and, like, to a degree, I still have, like, the ideas of that perspective, I can still look at it and be like, okay, well, at least X, Y, and Z, but, um, at the same end, to the same token, I um, can't help but recognize that the place that I'm in in my job, albeit better than the place that he's in, is still miserable. (laughs) And um, everybody keeps saying that we're on the verge of a depression, and I can't help but wonder if we're already in the depression and we are just not calling it that so officially because like the prices of everything have skyrocketed the cost of living is at an all-time high um young people are not moving out of their parents houses in a timely manner um young adulthood is more a stressful and distressed time than it's ever been before. It used to be the the best years of someone's life was that 20 to 29 range, and now it's just a stressful pile of non-existence. 
And that's unfortunate that our way of life has changed so much that people in their early years are so miserable in life. And um, I'm doing well for myself, but like I am very much so a large exception to that rule. Like the things that I have done to set myself up, I like to feel like they're repeatable and that anyone could do it. But I don't honestly know that can be true. And that's unfortunate. And it's interesting because uh, it was all hard work driven. Like I put the work in and I earned what I earned because I've put the work in. And because I'm fortunate to have leaders that recognize that. But um, a lot of people feel that they put the work in and they don't reap the rewards. And I don't know that there's 100% truth to that because we as the individual always feel that we're working harder than we really truly are or than people perceive us to be. And we're all out for number one and we're not going to do any more work than we necessarily feel that we're due or that we're supposed to be doing. And then on top of that, um, we've got all the other people pulling their weights or not pulling their weights. And so it's just an unfortunate scenario that we find ourselves in. But it brings me back to my point, because I tend to get off topic when I'm talking here, but it brings me back to my point about the next depression, the new depression, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, like, what defines a depression? Like, obviously, the banking system failed last time, and I'm not certain that our banking system is going to fail this time, but I think it's going to be a depression in an alternate, different kind of way. And, like, did the cost of living skyrocket back then? I feel like that was around the same time as, like, the Dust Bowl. So there was, like, famine, and it was hard to find food. And it was just a real rough go-around for American society at the time. And I can't help but wonder, but feel like um, we're almost... Like I said, I feel like we're almost already there if we're not already there. Like, people are depressed and I don't know if depressed people is what defines the Great Depression or if it's the state of the economy but the state of the economy is also in shambles so it's like any way you look at it from any direction wow that person did a very risky move on that one anyway any way you look at it from any direction like the country and the people that occupy it are not in great shape and they're in worse shape than they historically have been. And so then when you take that information, it's like, okay, what do we do with this? Like, um, like I said, everybody says we're on the verge of a depression. I think we're already there. And, um, what does it take to come out of that? What will it take? What would it take to come out of that? I don't honestly know, but trying to understand um, our situation helps us with things. And going back to the perception that I was talking about before, like I said, it's nice to surround ourselves with others who are in a variety of life situations so that you can understand and appreciate where you are. And the popular advice that successful people give is that you are the summary of the five people you spend the most time with. And it's not a piece of advice that I agree with all that much. I am someone who prides himself in individuality and um, to think that I am just a reflection of the five people with whom I spend the most time seems a bit um, bogus to me. And, like, it's just frustrating because I spent my entire life in other people's shadows being compared to other people. Like, I was compared to my older two brothers frequently. And the decisions I make are almost never my own. People just assume 
that I make them because of what I've learned through them or what I've observed through them. And I'm like, that's not true. Like, I come about a lot of these decisions on my own. And, like, do I observe what they've done and understand what they've done and taken pieces of that? Yeah, sure. But, like, to say that all of my decisions are not my own is an infinitely irritating thing to say. And I honestly can't stand it. But... Um, where was I going with that? We were talking about perception and, oh, people being the sum of the five people that they spend the most time with. Um, part of what differentiates me is, like, I don't, in the grand scheme of things, I don't spend a whole lot of time with a whole lot of people. And so it's like, is that what allows me to be more of an individual? Because I have friends and we spend time together. But, like, if I were to try and honestly, like, pin down the five people with whom I spend the most time, I don't know that I could very easily do that. And um, it's an unfortunate state to be in. It's an unfortunate... um, It's just everything about it is just unfortunate. But I'm not certain... Or, no, I am certain that that at least does not apply to me. To say that we are the summary of the five people we hang out with, but I do feel like it is important to hang out with a variety of people for that very reason. If you believe in the mentality that you are the summary of the five, then perhaps somebody who isn't doing as well as you will encourage you to do better than they are, and therefore, even though you are not directly using their life experience to add you well you are using it to enhance your own but you're not using it as your own if that makes any more sense than what I've been saying this whole time essentially it's encouraging it's using other people as encouragement to do better rather than using other people as encouragement to do the same as them like if I hung out with five people frequently who were all in these lesser dead-end jobs and just doing the work to do the work and then I quit my life situation to be in the same situation as them, then yes, I would be effectively the summary of those five people. But I am, in fact, doing the opposite. I am working my tail off to land a job that is in a better way than where they are. And that's not to take shots at them or to speak ill of them. Like I said, from my perspective, like I value my friendships very highly and I'm not going to judge someone for their life situation because anybody can be in any number of situations for any number of reasons. And all I can do is pass judgment on the person I perceive you to be and the person that you have been when around me. And anything past that point really is um, not relevant. And so I'm hoping that um, we can make it through what I'm calling the new depression like I'm I'm saying it's here we're depressed like how much more depressed and economically fragile do we need to become before we call it a depression and like we had the recession in 2008 and was I believe that's when the housing market crashed that was a whole big thing maybe that's what they're waiting for maybe something has to crash for it to officially be a depression because, like, the banking system crashed in, like, the 1930s or 20s or whenever the original depression was. And then um, the housing market crashed in the Great Recession. And so maybe for the new depression, something new has to crash. I don't know what. But, um, like I said, I feel like we're pretty much already there. And there has been no major crashing. It's just life in general is becoming more expensive, more miserable people are wanting more for less, which has always been an issue in the working world. They want more and more and more out of you. They want to squeeze the toothpaste out of you, but they are, um, 
they are not willing to give you any more for it. And, like, that is a bigger issue than we lead on to at this point because employers, companies in a whole, have a heck of a lot of power in this world that we don't necessarily acknowledge. Like, employees or employers... Um, will pay their employees however they see fit. They will pay you what you what they feel you are worth. And in the grand scheme of things, they know that people need jobs to exist. And so, if you aren't willing to do the job for how much they say that you're worth, then they'll find someone else who will for what they're willing to say that they're worth. And then they want to turn around and get upset when they get a lot of bad employees or mad employees or it's a constant turnaround train. And that's part of the overall mentality. I think the very same about like grocery stores. Grocery stores have a great deal of power in modern day society. They pretty much dictate what we do and don't eat. Like if the major chain grocery stores one day woke up and were like, we're not going to carry pork anymore, then all of a sudden we can't eat pork because the modern day grocery stores have decided that we can't eat pork. And what power do we have, sort of becoming a pig farmer, to um, combat that? And I'm not really sure that we have much of power in, in, in the grand scheme of things, and it's unfortunate because um, we don't like to acknowledge the fact that our life is so tight and dependent upon other things and other people, but the reality of the situation is it is just that. It is tight and dependent upon other things and other people. And if grocery stores decided that we're no longer going to be eating pork, what do we have to do to combat that? If employers across the board decide, oh, we're only going to pay you eight bucks an hour and we're only hiring part-time people, like, what do you do at that point? The internet has given us incredible means to be self-sufficient. And I feel like now, more than ever in today's society, we're starting a kind of resurgence of self-sufficiency. If you're able to provide your own food for yourself and you're able to provide your own income, then you are, in theory, miles ahead of the rest of the world. I am, unfortunately, very much so dependent upon the... um, How do I want to say this? I am very much so dependent upon the infrastructure in place that if anything major ever changed I would just be dead in the water and I don't like that I keep saying that like I'm gonna do something as small as like learning to raise chickens because I'm pretty sure I can have chickens on my property and like something just small like that so that I can be more self-sufficient and then um, continue on that way And it's like a whole job, it's a whole thing, but it's something that I feel like is ultimately for the better, for the best. So anyway, this is a good conversation, I feel like. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I hope it was fruitful for you. And um, hopefully you're living a bit less of a depression than I am. But um, it's just, it's feeling these days. It's really feeling. So thanks for stopping by.